Hey, I'm Chef Sarah Glover and this is my kitchen and it's your restaurant. I'm here in the beautiful Joshua Tree. It's about two hours um, out of LA, it's in California. I've got three amazing recipes for you and it's gonna elevate your next camp trip. Let's get cooking. Smashed potatoes are one of my signature dishes that I do for most of my catering events. So I thought I'd show you guys how to do it just by simply doing on some propane as well. You can pre-cook your potatoes before you head out on your adventure. That's another great idea. These are nice and soft now. Um, you can get something like a little baby Kifler potato. Works fantastic. You want to get them um, so they're nice and soft and you can kind of like touch them in your hands and they feel like they're going to fall apart. You drain all of your hot water off them and you just let them steam that way and that will just dry out any excess water because essentially you just want to remove as much moisture as you can from your potato because the water will stop them from going crispy which is what we want because we want crispy smashed potatoes i'm gonna light my little gas cooker here throw it up to high what i've got is a cast iron frying pan again these are probably the best thing for the job if you've got like a little camp frying pan that's fine as well I just like the residual heat that our um, cast iron frying pans give us now I've got some ghee here you could also do it with avocado oil coconut oil um, extra virgin olive oil um, I just like the flavor of ghee and it's what I've got in my little um, camping setup today so I've put in a fair amount probably a tablespoon and a half there and I just want that to melt down because this is what's going to fry our potatoes. Let that get nice and hot. And then with your potatoes, the trick with it is to have a dishcloth or we call them tea towels in Australia. And you're going to open it up. You want to pop your potato in there and you're going to press down on it. And that actually gets rid of any excess moisture that's in our potato. And we want like a nice flat, even potato. I have seen people do this um, by actually smashing it underneath the base of something, but I just like using my hands. So then you're going to pop that in your frying pan as it starts to heat up. We're going to fill it up with lots of potatoes. Do, 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 do. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. That is another reason your potatoes won't go crispy. Number one, the pan might not be too hot. Number two, you might have overcrowded it. So try not to overcrowd your frying pan. Again, if you're around a campfire and you want to try this um, cooking over the coals, please do. Make sure you leave me a comment below and let me know how that worked out for you. Got all the colors today and my potatoes. And you can just see they're starting to fry off really nicely now in my oil or my ghee. Again, the trick is temperature. You don't want it to get too low or basically they won't fry in the oil and you don't want to get it too hot where they burn. So there is that happy medium. I've got some Tasmanian sea salt. I'm just going to throw that on top of my potatoes. As you can tell, I'm fairly liberal with my salt. I lack a good amount of seasoning. Probably not going to add any more potatoes to my pan. I feel like that's like a nice amount there. Any more and you're just going to overcrowd your pan. I'm on a little bit of a lean here, so I'm finding the oils are soaking to one side of my frying pan. So I'm just going to be mindful of that as these are cooking to like rotate it around as I need to. I would say probably five minutes on each side. You just don't want to rush your potatoes and you also don't want to be flipping them constantly. You try to want to avoid that. You just want to flip them once. Um, so leave it, don't touch, don't be tempted. Go and chat to a mate, have a beverage, whatever you need to do to just stop yourself from moving your potatoes too soon. Because as soon as you lift them up, all that lovely heat that's under them gets lost and all that caramelization that's happening just dissolves. I'm gonna throw garlic with mine today. You can add rosemary to your pan. You could add um, thyme, oregano, any herb like that would just be so fantastic. And depending what you're gonna eat them with, whether it's like fish or chicken or pork or lamb, you would obviously just, you know, adjust your herb to suit that. All right, I'm gonna probably do 
three or four cloves of garlic because garlic, once it starts to cook, obviously all that peppery flavor is lost. Now I can see a nice amount of smoke happening and I just want to check under them, yum. Looking good. Now is a good time to flip. You're getting a little bit of golden color, which is perfect. I'm just peeling my garlic here. A bit generous there with the old garlic. I feel like this is kind of getting a little too hot as well, so I'm just gonna pull it off. And I also feel like I could add a little bit more ghee into my frying pan. So I'm just gonna chuck in another tongful. That's a great thing about cast iron is when they get too hot, you can move them to the side, it's still gonna cook and it's not gonna lose all that heat that's been, um, that we've been using to cook our potatoes with. Now I'm just gonna pop them back on, give this a rough chop. Now for you, those of you that don't know really what ghee is, it is clarified butter. You can make it on your own. It's just basically when you put butter into a pan and you heat it up to a temperature so the milk solids evaporate out of it or you like skim them off the top. Um, and that way you just left with the oils from the butter to cook with. You probably will hear me talk about ghee a lot. I love cooking with ghee. Um, I mostly cook with ghee, extra virgin olive oil and um, coconut oil. They're kind of like my favorites. Um, I like coconut oil for the flavor, um, but it's not always appropriate with like meats and stuff because it can be quite overpowering. I tend to cook that more vegetarian. So I've got my chopped up garlic. I'm gonna throw that in my frying pan now. I wouldn't have added this earlier. The reason being is that if I added it too soon, the garlic would have burnt and we would have just ended up with burnt bits of garlic rather than like slightly caramelized garlic with our smashed potatoes. Got some parsley, some flat leaf Italian parsley, which actually would be really nice for this. Just add a little bit of bright freshness to it. I can really smell that. I kind of like that my garlic has gotten a little crispy. I feel like I could turn my pan off now and my potatoes are just still gonna get some nice color on them while they sit and I cook something to go with them. Which to be honest, the next thing I had on my menu was um, green breakfast. So I guess we'll be having it with that. So I'm gonna add this in now gonna fry down a little bit. I'm just gonna let this sit while I go and make us some breakfast. It's just some simple smashed potatoes. Sometimes the simple stuff is the hardest thing to do. So I hope you enjoy this recipe. Make sure you um, love this um, recipe with a little heart button. Hit the little subscribe bell button, the subscribe button and hit the bell. The bell will actually notify you whenever I've got new recipes or I've been on new adventures. Thanks for joining and happy cooking.